I plan on speaking so fast that I sound like an auctioneer, so be braced. Uh, I'm interested in black hole data, in particular if black holes can be heard even if they're not seen. Everything we do in astrophysics is about what we can see, literally light that comes to us even from the Big Bang, from the earliest features of the cosmos, and um, even if it's not in the visible wave band, it's caught by telescopes. Light can even tell us about Einstein's greatest achievement, the general theory of relativity, and curved space-time. In this painting in the very back, you see a convex mirror, and on that mirror, the painting drew light rays on a curved surface. So we knew that the shortest paths on curved surfaces were curves. Um, we take this to general relativity, or Einstein did, to show us that in the presence of things like stars or black holes, the space-time is curved around us, and the light can tell us how that space-time is curved. If we had a black hole between us and our beautiful perspective of the Milky Way galaxy, it would not only cast a shadow from the event horizon where light could not escape, but it would also bend the light around us, coming to us from the Milky Way galaxy, tracing out the curves in space-time. We know that there are tens of thousands of black holes even in the center of our own galaxy, let alone distributed throughout the galaxy, and they can weigh 10, 30, 40, 50 times the mass of the sun, maybe even hundreds of times the mass of the sun. There's also a black hole that's supermassive in the center of our galaxy, and we think in the center of most galaxies. And the way that we know this is by looking at light, data from light. So for instance, astronomers have looked at the orbits of stars in the center of our own galaxy, and over 16-year time periods, they come back to the their starting point and they can deduce from that path that there must be a black hole at the center. This is a picture of M87, which is a galaxy 50 million light years away, and we see these huge jets powered by a central black hole. Those jets are thousands of light years across. Um, so black holes, even though they can't be seen directly, can be seen indirectly. This is also M87 in the radio waves. Um, by churning up the matter and, this, and the um, plasma and magnetic fields around them, they become very luminous. But what happens if black holes are not illuminated, if they're literally sitting there by themselves? So imagine we had two black holes which were orbiting around each other. What can happen is that the curves in the space have to wobble in response to the motion of the black holes, creating literally ripples in space-time, a squeezing and stretching of the shape of space. And these gravitational waves, are, as they're known, are um, the, the goal of future um, experiments we're very excited about collecting. And this is from a numerical simulation of two black holes orbiting where we're still helpfully painting the curves in space-time. That's the second off. That was the sound of two black holes merging. The reason why we say sound and not image is because gravitational waves, oh, damn, that was the sound of a supernova exploding. Gravitational waves are closest in analogy to sound and not to images. It's literally like a, a drum wobbling in empty space. So while there's no air to wobble your ear, you can measure the shape of the ringing drum and translate that into a speaker system and make sound. And this experiment that's drawn here is a 40 kilometer interferometer where they're um, interfering lasers to try to detect if those four kilometer arms have changed in size and shape at all as a gravitational wave passes. They're talking about measuring the difference between four kilometers and four kilometers plus the fraction of the nucleus of an atom. It's a remarkable achievement. There's gonna be detectors all around the globe and they're being right now elevated to their advanced detection sensitivity so that we expect in a few years we're gonna have this kind of global microphone which is gonna hone in on a point in the sky. When you have these sensitive experiments, you don't want seismic disturbances like trucks driving into your tunnel which is what happened one time when a security guard was driving through the desert because they were remotely trying to remove themselves from all seismic activity, he accidentally drove into the truck on the side of the tunnel, but nothing was hurt. In addition to black holes that are populated in the galaxy, we could see the merger of supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. And um, this is very exciting because it requires that we move into space to try to do these experiments. Um, we can also hear the Big Bang itself, and if my sound file was working, it would sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> white noise, that's all it would sound like. So I can imitate that one pretty well. Um, the primordial soup of the very early universe had a lot of wobbling of space itself also, and it made a very cacophonous sound. And we also want to pick this up by space-based missions. This is an image from NASA of a proposed space-based mission that recently suffered a pretty devastating funding cut. Um, but the European um, Space Agency is going to take over what we fondly call Lisa Light and redesign the experiment. Um, in addition, even though I said this is for black holes that can be heard but not seen, we are trying to think of ways to see these sort of dark systems. This is a black hole neutron star, and believe it or not, if there's a magnetic field on the neutron star, um, which is a collapsed state before a black hole, we can make a kind of electrical circuit and light it up a little bit. That's work with Sean McWilliams. And if you're interested in this work, please see these websites. And I want to tell you, keep up the volume, because naturally my website makes sound. Thank you. <laughs>